Hello, hope you're staying safe and healthy. Thank you for watching my Mechie 415 final project presentation. Today we'll be discussing the myth of whether or not a fired bullet can explode a combustible container. We'll first start with a short clip of the myth as seen in James Bond Casino Royale. So as we see at the end of this clip, James Bond fires a bullet at the propane tank, causing a massive explosion, allowing him to escape. The question is, can a bullet pierce a combustible tank and cause an explosion? There will be two sections of this myth that will require analysis. First, will the bullet pierce the tank? And second, will the bullet cause an explosion? This myth was actually tested by Mythbusters in their James Bond special. However, they only tested one scenario of this myth, which was a 9mm handgun against a propane tank. This project will test additional eight scenarios comprising of three different tanks and three different guns. So first, let's take a look at these tanks. Three different combustible tanks were chosen for this myth analysis, including the propane tank previously tested with Mythbusters. The other two tanks to be tested will be a 55 gallon steel drum containing diesel fuel and a fuel tank of a Toyota Corolla containing gasoline. The fuel tank was selected to offer some insight on another myth of whether or not you can blow up a car uh, by shooting it at its fuel tank. The materials and properties of these tanks can be seen in the following table. Please note the auto ignition temperature of the combustible fluid as this will be important later on in this presentation. Next, we'll take a look at the guns. Three different guns have been selected for this portion of the myth including the 9mm semi-automatic pistol, also tested by Mythbusters. I have chosen two other distinct guns with varying bullet speeds, as we can see in the table. One is the AK-47 assault rifle, and the other is the Macmillan TAC-50 sniper rifle. Once again, the properties of the guns and their corresponding bullets are shown listed in the table. There is also a noticeable difference in these guns, and that is that the sniper rifle actually uses steel core bullets instead of the conventional lead bullets. As is the case with any myth, it is important that we state the assumptions that were taken in order to constrain this analysis. For this myth, no drag force would be applied to the bullet in flight, meaning that the bullet would come into the contact with the tank at its muzzle velocity. Next, the tanks that were selected will be assumed to be of standard dimensions without any deformations compromising the integrity of the tank. The analysis will be completed at standard ambient pressure and temperature at 1 
ATM of pressure and 25 degrees Celsius. For the energy transfer of the bullet, it is assumed that 50% of the bullet's kinetic energy was transferred to thermal energy. The guns and bolts to be tested will be standard issue without any modifications. The bolts are assumed to make a clean horizontal trajectory, not deviating after contact with the tank. The propane tank will be filled to the standard fill pressure. The fuel tank will stay at an ambient pressure, even though in most cases the pressure will rise as the fuel is consumed. And finally, no heat is lost from the bullet in flight. Two different bullet penetration models were used in order to analyze the first section of this myth. First, we take a look at the punzlet penetration model that was seen in class. This model relies on the commonly found engineering principle that the sum of the forces acting on the bullet is equal to the bullet's mass times its acceleration. The forces acting on the bullet can be seen in the free body diagram presented in the slide. This principle leaves us with the final equation to determine the penetrating depth of the bullet. Next, in order to check the accuracy of the Ponslet model, we also apply Newton's approximation for impact depth. The model works by relating the densities of the projectile and the penetrated medium. In our case, this is the bullet and the tank wall. It also relies on the assumption that the shape of the bullet can be treated as a Newtonian penetrator. Finally, this approximation leaves us with the final equation noted on the slide, which relates to the schematic drawn out to the right of it. We will now look at the second section of this myth that will be needed in order to prove or disprove this myth. In order to determine the combustible nature of the bullet in contact with the fluid, we will rely simply on the conservation of energy principle, which in our case states that the bullet's kinetic energy will be transferred to thermal energy upon impact. It is important to note that this is a highly conservative approach and it significantly overestimates the likelihood of our tank exploding. Even after making this assumption, that only 50% of the bullet kinetic energy is transferred to thermal energy, which is a number that was chosen after consulting many online sources. In reality, there is much energy release as sound as well as the energy required to pierce the tank. Regardless, using this method, we come up with a final equation that determines the temperature rise in the bullet upon impact. We'll return now to the results of our two penetration models after running the simulation. As we can see from the penetration depth listed in the two tables, the accuracy of the Ponslet model has been proven by its similarity when compared to Newton's approximation. It is important to note, however, the behavior of these two models, with Newton's approximation presenting initial higher results for the 9mm handgun, and then presenting smaller results for the sniper rifle. In all nine scenarios tested, the bullets were able to pierce the shell of the tanks. This is based on the fact that the penetration depths are larger than the wall thicknesses of the tanks. In some cases, the penetration depths indicate that the bullet may in fact go right through the tank, piercing both walls. It is also important to remember that the muzzle velocity of the bullet was used in this analysis. In order to increase the likelihood of an explosion, it may be advantageous for the bullet to only pierce one end of the receptacle and come to rest in the combustible container. Therefore, shooting at a distance may be advised. Finally, I've included a figure in this slide demonstrating the difference between both models of penetration. As we can see from the results, the Newton's approximation does not seem to be as sensitive to muzzle velocity, indicating that perhaps the model becomes inaccurate at very high velocities, as seen with the sniper rifle. We'll now look at some of the results obtained in terms of the bullet's combustion ability. Using the conservation of energy approach, we obtain the following rise in temperatures when the bullet impacts the containers. If we add the initial ambient temperature to the bullets, we obtain the following final temperatures as seen in the table at the top of the slide. If the temperatures were found to be greater than the fluid's auto-ignition temperature, then there's a risk that combustion may occur. The results in terms of our nine scenarios are listed in the summary table below, in which the red X indicates no risk and the check mark indicates the scenarios where risk is present. It is important to mention once again that this was a very conservative approach that highly exaggerates the combustibility risk of these scenarios. So far, what the math tells us is that this myth is plausible. However, there are still many unmodeled factors that may significantly reduce the chance of explosion. First, in order for an explosion to actually occur, it is the gas fumes that need to be ignited, since the combustible and liquid form will often extinguish the ignition effect from the hot bullet or even from the sparks created from bullet ricochet. 
These vapors are most commonly found at the top of the tank, which is where the bullet would need to pierce. For the propane tank, this vapor section is highly pressurized. Even though creating this explosion is very unlikely, it still poses a risk due to the rapid release of high pressure propane. It is also important to consider what is likely to happen when the bullet pierces into other receptacles. Unless a fluke occurs, the bullet will likely only cause a leak of the fluid in the surrounding areas without an explosion. However, if one were to continue to shoot at the tank, this fluid release would only grow and create a vapor cloud in the surrounding area, increasing its explosion risk. It is more than likely that unloading a full AK-47 magazine into these tanks may result in an explosion. If we're talking specifically about the car's fuel tank, this risk is mitigated by positioning the fuel tank in a safe location, such as under the backseat of a sedan. Modeling this scenario would require us to include all the additional material that would need to be pierced in order to get at the tank. Lastly, this myth used only unmodified bullets. There are many bullet modifications that can be made in order to further increase the chance of an explosion. For example, tracer bullets are bullets with a small pyrotechnic charge used to follow the trajectory of the bullet. However, this charge also increases its combustion ability. To finish off, I thought it might be useful to summarize a few key points of the study. We conducted our analysis using three different fuel tank types and three different guns, equating to nine distinct scenarios. Our analysis determined that the bullets fired from all the guns could likely pierce the tanks, but only select few gun tank combinations would result in an explosion. The analysis was conducted by making use of two different penetration models, as well as the conservation of energy principle. The AK-47 was found to be the most successful and posed a risk for all the tanks, followed by the Macmillan TAC-50 sniper rifle, and finally the 9mm handgun. It, also, it is also important to note that there were many unmodeled factors that reduced the ignition risk of this myth. To conclude, I believe this myth is plausible but highly unlikely. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my analysis of this myth. I've included a list of the references I used when conducting the study. This list is also included in the description below, as well as my final project report.